What's up and welcome to all my viewers from around the world. The sun is hiding and the magpie is casting. Coming at you guys today with a 1v1 live game. Featuring spawning here in the west, the Vermac forces of Desert Fox Rommel WWU. Uh, who is uh, a player I've cast before. Um, don't particularly remember too much about his playstyle, but I do remember him being a pretty competent player. And uh, spawning in the east, the United States forces of Korean Air Force, the third wing. So uh, this is also a player who I've cast before. Uh, last time uh, I saw him, he was playing British forces. And uh, he uh, <coughs> was able to entrench himself into the late game um, on, uh, I think, I believe Road to Kharkov was the map that we saw him last on. Uh, able to stage a very late game comeback with uh, sub 100 tickets and his opponent still had 500 and he was able to actually uh, eke a victory out of that game. It was quite impressive stuff. So we'll see how uh, the Korean Air Force decides to uh, approach this game. He has already selected a commander. Of course, he's gone for the Rifle Company commander, by far the most popular and probably best of the American commanders. It's just a very good commander to have. And uh, that's going to mean uh, that's going to mean that he can call in those elite rifle squads uh, very shortly. Uh, actually, he's going to need 300 manpower for that, so because he's gone double uh, double regular riflemen, he won't be able to go for those uh, veteran riflemen just yet. Now, uh, I believe in the last patch on the 17th of September, those riflemen, the um, call-in, the elite rifleman training, was uh, changed a little bit, so you can now only ever receive squads at one-star veterancy. Before, there was a very small chance that you'd get some arriving at two-star veterancy or sort of high one-star veterancy. So um, <coughs> now those squads are going to arrive with one-star veterancy every time. Kind of seems fair, seems a little bit more reliable, seems a little bit less of a roll of the dice, which for something so important is um, is, is usually a good thing. Uh, going to have a scuffle up here in the north as uh, some pioneers and grenadiers in decent cover, setting up some field defences here, a bit of barbed wire. That's a, that's a good idea, I think, here from uh, from Desert Fox Rommel. These riflemen want none of it. They're going to relocate. They're going to transfer back into mid. And uh, if we uh, crack the tack, we can see how the forces are, d are spread out at the moment. We've got a sniper coming out to back up the Vermac forces. Three squads of riflemen fanning out, one of veteran riflemen now coming in. And uh, <coughs> a squad of rear echelon troops uh, grabbing all of the ground to the south of the map. So, here comes our first scuffle here. We've got a sniper at the back, Zim Major. D did he just miss? Wow, he took a shot at the building and missed. That is unlucky. The enemy is taking our territory. And, uh, Gonna relocate, probably maybe just get behind this truck and take some shots. I'd love to see him come left a little bit more. Anyway, uh, the sniper traditionally... Um, oh dear, oh, I'm not sure I like falling back that sniper. The reason I don't like falling back the sniper is when he's falling back, he can't actually get any kind of invisibility or camo. There's also negative cover on this road, so by falling back the sniper, you're committing him to running around here and going this way. I think he could have been more useful and taken less damage if he'd have just continued to run over here and played for a bit of time. Maybe fall back down this line here instead. Uh, anyway... Grenadiers going to garrison this building, riflemen at close range, also some riflemen over here behind the wall on the flank. These grenadiers are going to be whittled down quickly. You can hear the rate of fire on that ground is very rapid. Uh, the uh, semi-automatic with the uh, that, uh, that um, characteristic magazine ejecting sound, cling, 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 which you can hear from time to time <coughs> from the American forces. Here's Zim Major, comes back to the field. He has now scored two kills against these riflemen. These grenadiers are doing much better than I thought they would in this building, actually. And I think with the help of this sniper, they'll be able to push these riflemen back. It is risky leaving them still in there on such low health. You are risking a squad wipe. And pulling them out at the last second is Desert Fox Rommel. This is what I mean about him being a competent player. Although the American forces have decided to grab this building, they could put some fire on the sniper. But no, he takes a shot and then engages his, uh, his camo. So uh, he's, he's probably uh, not going to be in jeopardy, is the sniper. <coughs> Scuffle to the north as some pioneers going to displace some veteran riflemen. Wow, uh, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, I think at that range they were going to take that fight, so uh, that's a little frustrating for the Korean Air Force. Probably if he'd have seen these guys coming, he would have relocated his riflemen behind this heavy cover and uh, made a little bit more of a fight of that. But having said that, with the sniper coming in and with the German forces dominating this region of the map, seems fair to fall that unit back. So... Let's take a look here at the uh, the build orders for the two players. I believe the build for uh, Desert Fox was uh, Grenadier, Sniper, Grenadier, Grenadier, Grenadier. Going up to four squads of Grenadiers, so often the techniques, so often the tactics seen from Vermac players. You can't argue with them. The straight up fact of the matter is that Grenadiers are better than MG42s or Mortar squads. So unless your opponent is going for a build which uh, prioritizes the use of one of those two counters, uh, Riflemen, I'm oh, sorry, uh, Grenadiers are just going to serve you better. Uh, so, 
Yep, possibly something Relic needs to look at from a balance point of view. I'm not saying nerf the Grenadier, but I am saying possibly some changes need to be made. So we see a little bit more diversity in the early game from from uh, Vermac players, because I've seen it get to like the 10 minute mark or even later, and pretty much we're just looking at walls of Grenadiers still. Um, so anyway, yep, that's something that they might want to look at. Escalate to Battle Phase 1 just now coming onto the uh, onto the build queue, so we're going to see that coming out. Uh, it seems that uh, the Axis forces Desert Fort Trommel also taking a small point lead at the moment. 20 points, nothing to write home about. Um, <coughs> a lot of riflemen here going to catch these Grenadiers who aren't in particularly good cover. Meanwhile, so the South Captain here is going to exchange with these Grenadiers, but I think that's a fight he's going to lose with the two Bazookas basically being a liability in that squad. He's going to have to fall this squad back, and that is a squad in danger of being wiped if he focuses it with the other Grenadier squad, which he has here. There's the focus. A little late, I believe. He could have been shooting at it all the way. Oh, he's going to get it, and there is a Zook on the floor. Insult could be added to this injury by the stealing of the Zook. Wow. Now that is harsh times for the American player. Not only was his captain squad destroyed, but the enemy have actually gained in strength. A very valuable bazooka being swiped. And uh, especially given that the Stuart is going to be the follow-up choice from the American player, that bazooka could play quite a role here. Um, a Faust into a bazooka stalk situation could be a very real end to that tank. Uh, which wasn't an option before. Anyway, going to see a bunker coming up in the base of the Vermac player, Desert Fox Rommel, keen to uh, have his forces at uh, decent health when he falls to the back. <coughs> Good idea, very wise. Obviously, you know, if you're a Vermac player and you're not doing this, um, you know, take it from me. It's a good idea. I think you should do it. Um, if you, if certainly if you find yourself floating a little bubble of manpower on those 60 munitions. Yeah, crack out the medic bunker in your base. Why not? It's good stuff. Here comes the Stuart with some pretty nice camouflage. Um, that is cool. And uh, flamethrower upgrades now beginning to be purchased for the rifleman squads, who are a little outnumbered owing to the wiping of that captain. Now the Stuart's just going to commit to mid. I kind of like this because he knows there's not going to be any massive threats on the board just yet. I mean, he knows it as a zoo, but that's it. Up to three flamers now is Korean Air Force. Wow, that is quite spicy, and I dare say that's quite a good counter to Grenadiers, so liking that. Got a rifleman squad here, just going to push these pioneers back. Actually, two rifleman squads. They're going to command the south of the map. The Stuart is kind of in an awkward position. Not quite sure what it's doing there. Hasn't really managed to do very much damage. Um, <coughs> kind of just revealing itself for nothing there. I, I sort of like, in a way, hanging back with units until they have an opportunity to sledge in for some damage. And um, and that way, you know, that that way your opponent isn't building the appropriate counter um, for a while before your unit's paying off. Uh, although, having said that, no appropriate counter seems to have been picked yet by Desert Fox Rommel. Uh, does he have his... Uh, tier 2 tech building. He does not. He needs to start constructing that. He can do that right now. <coughs> the reason I say that is because I think he kind of needs a pack gun, to be honest. And uh, I've just missed a grenade going off on this uh, squad of grenadiers. They're going to be forced out, and that's going to cede map control over to the Americans to the north. And with that, it's a, kind of a period of dominance opening up now for uh, the Korean Air Force. These uh, aggressive strategies using Flamer, Rifleman, and, uh, and the Stuart is actually kind of being enough here. If we look at the mini-map, all of the uh, Vermac forces are either here or here, so map control right now completely in the ha in, in American hands, and uh, making a decent land grab, prioritizing the uh, victory point. He's going to get the fuel point next, and then I imagine probably the munitions point. So prioritizing, uh, depriving the, the Axis forces of resources is the Korean Air Force, and I think that's that's a pretty savvy plan. I like that. Now, <clears throat> this Stuart needs to get out and repair, which is something it can do with its vehicle crew. The fact that there's no engineers or rear echelon troops is absolutely fine. One of the many luxuries of playing is the USF. Uh, so, these Grenadiers are going to force these riflemen back. The Stuart, I mean, it could help here, but I really don't think it wants to get involved. Uh, it only takes a couple more Fausts or that Bazooka squad to show up again, and uh, things are going to start going wrong. For the Stuart, here comes the... Here comes the sniper. He's moving up to the north. Going to take some shots into these Protect riflemen. They're going to have to make themselves scarce. They are very, very outnumbered there. And the Major is going to miss. Stuart's being repaired in a fair position. I don't mind this. It's a little exposed. I mean, potentially, hypothetically, an Axis squad could run out through there because the American player doesn't really have much vision down there on the south of the map. But, you know, whatever. Ever since I saw Captain S. Price get the uh, epic steal on a vehicle, I... Uh, I've been questioning where American uh, forces choose to stop and repair their tanks, so... Anyway. Three-quarter ton ambulance doing the rounds back at base, doing some, uh, doing a lot of healing back there. The Axis force is going to marshal the north of the map again. Got a squad of grenadiers, going to grab back the fuel point, and that is crucial. Uh, 
I find that Vermax is one of these teams, because they never get a forward fullback point, and because their squads are also fairly brittle, being mostly, if not entirely, four-man squads, uh, I find that as an army, they do like to sometimes just completely retreat back to base, reinforce, rearm, repair, come back out in full strength. So there are like natural ebbs and flows to the Max game where sometimes the entire army, I mean, it is just genuinely the right decision to get everything out of combat and repair and rearm and reinforce it. Um, so I think we just saw like a mini moment like that just now where all of the Vermac forces were in their bases, but they've come out redoubled in good strength. They've uh, kind of taken back the north, although that is changing now thanks to this Flamer Rifleman squad. And they're also establishing a, a decent presence in the in the middle of the map. Now, interestingly, Desert Fox Rommel has never once committed uh, like, oh wow, a squad wipe going down there. Uh, Desert Fox Rommel, unlucky there to lose that, that Grenadier squad. Um, but yeah, Desert Fox Rommel has never committed a large amount of troops or anything really serious to the south of the map, and that's been in American hands the whole game. This munitions point, this fuel point, this victory point, basically uh, uncontested for the Korean Air Force, which is interesting. The sniper's going to try and get back and continue flanking. The Stuart doing good work in mid, and you have to wonder. So he has finally established his uh, Leichter Mechanized Company, and we do have a pack gun coming out, which is kind of what he's been needing for a while now. Pack gun's not in the best position, kind of on an, ex on an exposed flank, but the Major does have it covered for now. He's up to 16 kills and two star veterans, so so his rate of fire upgrade is going to start kicking in now. Two star, two, two star plus is where the German sniper starts getting really good. And uh, everybody is uh, reinforced, coming back out. Not going to leave these two squads here to re to uh, heal, which seems fair. Sniper is going to come back to heal, which seems a little premature, seeing as how he's basically on full health. I think that might have been a misclick, actually, seeing as how the sniper just immediately bounced back out. Ah, sorry about with me just <coughs> having a little sip of my drink there. Uh, so let's have a look at the tech game for the American player. Now... Uh, he is developing the Major. Oh, thank goodness. Hooray. So, <laughs> the reason I'm so glad about this, this is the first game I've actually cast since the uh, September 17th patch, where an American player I've been casting uh, has actually gotten the Major. And this means that we might actually see a Sherman, or even an Easy 8 And uh, both of these units um, were altered in the last patch. I've got the patch notes just here. Let me, uh, let me refresh myself as to how these units were changed a second. Okay, so US forces. Here we go. So I just try and frame this action for you. Uh, so the Sherman. Oh yes, the Sherman has had a basically a plus 20 penetration increase at every range. So that's at near, mid, and far. So that should give it a lot more punch against Axis armor. The Easy 8 has had health increase um, to from 640 to 720. So a decent health buff there. And has also had its penetration at short range increased from 175 to 200. Now the front armor on a Panther, I believe, is something like 170, 175, so that should allow the Easy 8 at close range to knock holes in Panthers fairly reliably. So it'd be nice to see exactly how much that changes things. Now finally, we've got a slightly more interesting squad coming out. Here we have an MG42 squad, phosphorus barrage being used, but the Pack 45, sorry, the Pack 40 and the uh, Sniper are going to be out of the range there, so they're not going to be fussed. Now this MG42 is going to be forced to come back and reposition the Flamer rifle moving in are a severe threat to this pack gun and the MG squad. A grenade comes down and that has to be, it is a squad wipe. And uh, that MG42 not long for this world, able to fire only a few rounds from this building before getting destroyed. Now here come the LMG42 grenadiers and a wave of other infantry. This, uh, this pack gun is still perilously exposed and where's the sniper for uh, the Axis forces? Here he is and there's a couple of rifle grenades getting some decent damage but only one model defeated. Only one model destroyed, and these units are going to have to get out. Now, there is possibility of a squad wipe on either the rear echelons or these guys. If you get the flamer, they could all burn. It's unlikely, though. Very unlikely. Um, so, uh, yep, the Stuart's up to one star veteran. See, way to go, Mr. Stuart. And uh, the forward fallback point using the Major and the Ambulance, of course, has been established in, a, in what is a really good position. I like this. It provides, uh, it, it provides a much shorter fallback path whilst being an equal striking distance pretty much of any point on the map. So that's going to be of great utility to the American player. And is as yet unscouted by Desert Fox Rommel. So even if he had a mortar or a panzer or some way of pushing through for damage on that location, in fact, you know what? He could just rush it with all this infantry and that'd be good. Oh dear, the three-star Zook squad going to need to get out. Oof, the Sherman just... Sorry, the uh, Sherman, the Stuart doing good damage here. I'd love to see him rotate it to bring the whole mounted uh, machine gun to bear, though. But, uh, as I was saying, yeah, uh, the uh, Vermac forces aren't even going to know about that forward fallback point, so no chance of a push for now to, uh, to poke it back or try and take out the ambulance and the one Now, the sniper here, up to 20 kills. 
doing good for himself, but still no real answer for this steward, which has pretty much largely gone unanswered the entire game. Now, where's the pack gun for the Wehrmacht forces? Is it still in the base? It is still in the base. And here we have a command panzer IV, which indicates that a commander has been chosen. And it is the Mobile Defense Doctrine. Fantastic commander, this very good all-rounder. One I like to use, one I like to watch, one I think is a very savvy choice. The command tank should be more than enough to uh, brush aside this uh, steward, so here we go, let's see. Oh, he needs to set that thing to focus vehicles. In fact, that's not even an option on this tank. Interesting. <coughs> and, uh, these riflemen, are they going to use the anti-tank vehicle grenade? Yes, they are. There it goes. Scoring a hit on the front, unable to uh, damage the engine. It's just going to do a little bit of damage there to that command tank before the riflemen fall back, which they do in good order. Now, it's probably a little premature to push here, uh, especially with the Sherman Easy 8 on the production queue, but there, there, there was an opportunity to chase with that command tank, and if he'd have just chased until about here, he would have seen this and probably gotten the ambulance. That would have been very disruptive to the American forces, so an opportunity there, but I don't blame him for not rushing his first fuel investment off into the fog of war blindly. You can't really do that. Uh, so, yeah, fair enough. Command tank just policing the field, pushing back any unwanted squads. I'd love to see the Axis infantry fan out and start grabbing land again. Is he out of manpower by any chance? Yeah, both players bang out of manpower, so reinforce rate's slow right now. Now, the American forces are going to be joined by this EZ-8, and that's going to change things. And that, I believe, should 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 bring in quite a, a dominant phase of play for the Americans. Reason being, look at the fuel for the Axis player. Down at 60 at the moment, and, and at only 16 per minute, uh, the income. So he's not going to have the fuel to make a, a counter-investment anytime soon, which basically means he's going to be looking at pack guns and, uh, and Fausts uh, and a Zook on one of his squads to deal with this EZ-8. So anyway, here it comes, the Sherman EZ-8 on the field. Uh, we have a scuffle developing here. Sniper in position, command tank in position, the Stuart also here. A lot of infantry for the Americans here. Good shot from the command tank. Able to get a penetrating hit on the Stuart at very long range. And now here comes the EZ-8 pushing into mid. Pack gunners in position though, getting a great hit on that. That's going to force the EZ-8 back, and that's awkward because that means the EZ-8's not going to have, not going to be able to transition up through here to take on the command tank up there, which is going to allow these riflemen to just use the protection provided by the command tank here to hold out against these, uh, these, uh, sorry, it's going to allow the grenadiers to hold out against these riflemen for quite a long time. Now, a flamethrower does make it into the building. The pack gun's going to have to relocate or die. Sherman EZ-8 is down at about 60% health right now, and it's going to come for the command tank. And that, oh no, it's not. No, he's going to back that away, going to play it safe. I don't know, actually. He's got enough infantry here in support. I like just bringing a EZ-8 here and having a couple of shots at the command tank. I like, like that option. I think that would have been a good one to take. And uh, there is the option of a Puma, actually, for the Axis forces. And that would be quite a canny choice. Um, I mean, you're playing with fire using a Puma against a Sherman EZ-8, but it could also be quite a cheap way of pushing back a very expensive uh, unit, making the EZ-8 look like a bit of a liability. Of course, the Puma would also make short work of the Stuart. That's just a that's just a that's a fight the Stuart never wants to take. <clears throat> now, I can hear the repairing of a Sherman EZ-8 somewhere, and it's going to just tuck in behind this building here and repair. Very safe spot. No danger of a Captain S. Bryce Ninja Grenadier squad nicking that unit halfway through repairing. <clears throat> just got to be good. Now. The Axis forces are considerably behind at the moment, trailing by like 208, 271 tickets, 273 now. And uh, Stuart's just going to come in and destroy the, or use its uh, special round to stun the uh, stun the command tank. Frustrating, but utter, in the end, sort of uh, fruitless, I would have thought. Maybe saving these rifles a little bit, but not much else. The EZ-8 is now repaired, and you can just see it on the mini-map, making its way up to the north of the map. It wants to match up to wherever the command tank is, so uh, Korean Air Force moving it into the appropriate location there. Our opponents are seizing a sector. And, uh, seems like a lot of riflemen fanning up from the south. Oh dearie me, and if you look at the mini-map, there is a nice concave of American forces wrapping around this ball of Vermax, and that could be dangerous. Looks like the Stuart's going to go down. The EZ-8 is chipping in, but it's not actually able to get a hit on the command tank. These riflemen with flamethrowers pushing up from the south, and that's going to be issues. Grenades are used with good effect. Now, this sniper could be pivotal in this battle. Sniper and LMG grenadiers are going to have to hold off against many squads here who are also making a land grab. That is crucial as well. And uh, the Axis forces looking to lose their only... Um, victory point right now, and when you're down at 189 under 480, that is not something you want to happen. So uh, Desert Fox Rommel on the clock big time here. He's going to need to bring something to the table. He's going to need to make a change to uh, the way things are going, because uh, 
It's not going to be sustainable for much longer. And that's an anti-tank grenade damaging the engine of the command tank. Now here comes the EZ-8 on mop-up duty, but there is a pack gun covering its back. And also these grenadiers are going to ward off the uh, EZ-8, taking two hits from the pack gun there, down to about 60% health. Uh, so that's a very well positioned pack gun for Desert Fox Rommel. Now I'd love to see these squad, I mean, yep, the fuel, this, uh, this capture point, definitely important. Yep, you always want to grab capture points, but right now you're 166 under 480. I'd say leave this and move, push straight onto the victory point. But uh, looks like it wouldn't make any difference anyway. There's an easy 8 here with a 50 cal. That may just get a squad wipe on these guys, unless Rommel is quick on the pullback, which actually luckily he is. So, uh, Yep, that's very good. Both squads with a large amount of veterancy on their units, and now we can finally start seeing the changes. Yes, I should mention, actually, when a rifleman gets a three-star vet, which they are now, uh, they receive 25% less, uh, or rather, things firing at them have 25% less accuracy. The name for that kind of statistic is uh, the, the riflemen have 25% less received accuracy. Um, so that effectively makes them a lot more durable. So let's look to see those changes now as these riflemen up to three-star, and uh, that's going to be something which starts taking effect another easy eight on the way for the american forces and i don't know what desert fox rommel can do to get out from under this under these easy eights i mean he's stuck down there pretty hard i mean he's got to be thinking too oh puma is the choice but i think if he knew that there's another easy eight coming he'd take that puma back reason being i don't know i mean does he have battle phase three no he doesesn't even have battle phase two. Oh yeah he must do because he's no, he doesn't. He doesn't have Battle Phase 2. Oh, dearie me. Wow. So, okay, a Puma is actually pretty much the best anti-tank platform he's going to be able to buy right now. I'd love to see this Puma just set to prioritize vehicles. Pumas are fine vehicles, and I myself have used them against uh, a wall of Shermans, but they weren't easy eights uh, in a game on my channel. You can go and find that if you like. I wouldn't mind you watching that because I looked quite good in that game. <laughs> um... And uh, this EZ-8 also going to be poking in from the south. The command tank, actually, th this EZ-8 is in behind it. If the EZ-8 just pushes to here and starts taking some rounds into the rear armor of that command tank, that is bad times. An anti-tank grenade going to be used to blast the engine on this Puma, which is going to try and limp back. The pack gun is all that stands between this EZ-8 and the Puma. But, oh my god, getting flamed out is the pack gun just before it gets the crucial last hit onto that EZ-8. The, the, the Puma is actually going to push trying to find the EZ-8, which is never going to happen. The EZ-8 is going to outrun it when it, in its current state with its broken engine. This EZ-8 here doing good damage. The command tank down to about 40% health. The squad here getting wiped out in this building. Here comes the Major. He's going to try and re re um, redress the balance of power down on this bank. Taking some shots at these riflemen. He's, up to, he's got his maximum rate of fire now. This Puma, though, needs repairs terribly. A Puma with a damaged engine is just a massive liability. This Sherman EZ-8, being a little bit awkward, needs to kind of just get it out of there and repair. Which uh, hopefully he's going to do. This EZ-8 also needing to repair. So if Desert Fox is going to make anything happen, it pretty much has to be now. All of the armor of his opponent out of the battle for repairs. And let's have a look at the infantry forces. They're ready. They're coming back out. Still has four squads of grenadiers. Still has a sniper. He can make something happen here as he grabs the north. He has the middle. So that puts him off the clock for the first time in a long time. Desert Fox Rommel has a little bit of space to breathe here, but not for long. He basically only has until these Sherman Easy 8s are repaired. The Sherman Easy 8s here there. Uh, there's one of them here, and the other one is uh, down here somewhere. Of course, they don't even appear as a vehicle on the mini-map uh, when, when the crew hop out and start repairing them. A little bit of a nightmare for your good old caster magpie here. But, uh, you know, what can I do? Uh, so, uh, yeah, going to grab the north of the map. Looks like, looks like these riflemen are going to try and throw a spanner in the works. That's a rifle grenade. Seems a little premature. Just catching one guy there. Good spread on those riflemen. But, uh, two more squads of, uh, of uh, grenadiers coming in. They all have LMG-42s. This is a fight these riflemen are going to find out that they probably can't take. Uh, but here comes a Sherman Easy 8 That's going to help. Now, where's that Puma? Is, is its engine back online? The Puma does have its engine back online, but it's still on like two-thirds health. Oh dear, the command tank is taking hits from Zooks, and it's got very low health. I don't like this. He needs to get that out of here. And uh, this Sherman Easy 8 is still doing work on these Grenadiers who haven't pushed onto this point to grab it, which means that... Which means that... Uh, Desert Fox Rommel could be back on the clock shortly. Sniper's coming in here, reloading at an inopportune moment. Another vehicle grenade could come out onto this uh, command tank. It's on so low health, yeah. And that is going to be the end of that Panzer IV command tank. And with that, with that, yeah, I was going to say, with that, the chances of Desert Fox Rommel in this game seem very slim. Uh, a, a competent build here from Korean Air Force. Nothing spectacular, just 
doing the elite rifleman uh, doctrine thing, basically, using rifles in the early game to just be superior to grenadiers and your other uh, and the other options for uh, pretty much any other team. I mean, riflemen are a powerhouse infantry unit, and then uh, using uh, getting the flamethrower upgrades onto your riflemen so that you can power through counter squads like MG 42s and stuff some stuff like that. Even in the face of a sniper who was alive the entire game and was the second unit built for uh, Dev Desert Fox Rommel, racking up an impressive 42 kills. Poor, nasty stuff. But even in the face of this sniper, uh, Naria Rifleman squad was lost. I, I'm not sure, maybe one squad was lost? Uh, hardly any, though. And the Flamers enabled them to power through the, uh, the early mid-game and also provide a very good deterrent to pack guns, which are one of the only anti-tank uh, anti units that Vermax have access to. Uh, and then the Sherman Easy 8 start rolling, and uh, I think it was I think Desert Fox Rommel chose this commander more or less blind. He chose this commander before he saw um, any Easy 8s coming. Uh, but I suppose you can probably guess that Easy 8s are coming when your uh, when your opponent has the Elite Rifleman commander, and he definitely knew that your, his opponent was using the Elite Rifleman commander. So knowing that your opponent's going for Elite Rifleman, I don't like the choice of this commander of, of this commander, the Mobile Defense Doctrine. I just don't think that Pumas and Command Tanks line up particularly well against Easy 8s. Um, so, uh, I mean, if that's if that's Desert Fox Rommel's preferred playstyle, he's clearly very comfortable with that. But I think it would have been worth trying to branch out and do something different. Um, maybe maybe go up to tech level three and try and get a Panther. I mean, even that, it's I mean because that's so much more fuel. So I'm not even sure if that was an option really. I'm, I'm kind of racking my brains trying to think trying to think what would have been a more acceptable play. I think more than one pack gun would have been really good actually. I think one pack gun was pushing your luck. Um, but just because they're such fragile units, they're so easily destroyed, so easily uh, the squad can be killed. So, a couple of pack guns. Puma was good, but he had enough money for another. I would have liked to have seen double Puma could actually have been a real thing. And in fact, the command tank was fairly low impact. So, I kind of think triple, triple or quad Puma would actually have been kind of a thing. That could actually have played, actually. Looking at the, force dis looking at the forces for each team, I think that triple Puma would have actually played. Um, you know, it's a pretty hard thing to micro, but I mean, you've you've got to you've got to do these things sometimes. You've just got to say that's the way I get out of this game. That's the line of play which gives me the best odds. You just got to try and make it work. So, yeah, I think triple puma. Uh, if that if this if this happens again, if you find yourself in these situations, just try relying. I mean, maybe it's just because I love pumas too much. I don't know. So, yeah, I guess that would be my advice based on this game. Um, yeah, and a good battle from both players. So, uh, thank you very much for watching. This is Magpie842 signing out.